Hi guys, Craig here from Bloom Cop, and today I have a long overdue review of the HP touchpad. First of all, we're just going to have a quick look at the device again, run through some of the specs, and then we'll get to the WebOS itself, and we'll have a quick WebOS tour, and we'll finish off with a quick sort of what my thoughts are and whether or not I would recommend it to you. We have the HP logo and an awful lot of fingerprints. And that is the one thing that you can say about this device, it is a fingerprint magnet. In terms of build quality, is very solid. I mean, it is plastic, you can't get away from that, but it does feel very solid in the hand. In terms of weight, it is heavier than the iPad, there is no getting away from that. In terms of specs, we have a, have a 9.7 inch measured diagonally XGA capacitive multi touch screen with 1024 by 768 resolution. I must admit that the, that the picture quality is very crisp and I've had nothing to say about that at all. It has integrated, oh, well it has messaging, but it has integrated IM and SMS messaging. I've got the original Palm Pre, which I tried to use in conjunction with the device. I was able to make phone calls on the device. For some reason it didn't want to send text messages, so I don't know whether or not that will be fixing the firmware updates. On the front, we have a front facing 1.3 megapixel webcam for video calling using Skype. This is the 16 gigabyte model, it also comes in a 32 gigabyte model. And in terms of battery life, I found it to be quite impressive. I got anything between 8 and 10 hours, and it has a 6300 milliamp hour battery. So I've mentioned weight, it comes in about 740 grams, which for the American audience is 1.6 pounds. In terms of actual size, you'll see that they are both virtually identical. You can put one on top of the other. In terms of thickness, however, this is where you can really see the difference because the touchpad is at least twice as thick as the iPad but I guess what you've got to remember is Apple has been in the game for more than a year longer than the touchpad has been but anyway we'll move that out to one side and we'll move on to the second part of this review which is a look at the software on the HP touchpad Radio. now the touchpad is sporting HP WebOS that's the latest iteration of the software that has been in development since HP bought Palm last year and this is their first foray into the tablet market I must say that the one thing that I really have been impressed with is how the WebOS does do multitasking I do think it does it the right way I would also say the same about actual notifications and that has been a criticism of the iPad device and some of the Android devices and that they do tend to take over the screen whereas on the WebOS device it does it quite discreetly as you can see in the top corner, there's a sort of envelope. So all you've got to do is swipe down. It tells you what notifications you've got. So on that one, for instance, I've got a Facebook notification and a couple from Cineworld when I went to cinema yesterday. So it brings up the notification. If you're interested, you can sort of tap on it and it'll open it up. Or you can swipe it away. Same for your emails. So the first one is a confirmation. Don't need that anymore. And the second one is telling me about a YouTube subscription through our Google account. Swipe that one away, and that's it, and you swipe down purely to get access, swipe that away, and then it'll disappear indefinitely. The f one just to the right hand side, which you swipe down, that is just telling you a couple of pieces of information about network, Bluetooth, and airport, and it also tells you the date. So you can change the screen brightness, you can make it go on mute, you can turn the anti-rotation lock on and off, which is, again, what you can do on the iPad by double tapping the home button, swiping across. I think it just makes it a little bit more quicker. Anyway, we'll just quickly break away from that and get back to the home screen again. Now the first application we're going to have a look at is the internet. So we click on that, fires up a little globe symbol and it opens it up. And the first thing to see is the keyboard for this device, which I think is fantastic. I've never really noticed it in the past, but you've got the numbers on the top and it is amazing how much time that saves you and in terms of keyboard size depending on what you want if you just hold down the keyboard in the bottom right hand corner you can have a medium sized keyboard small sized keyboard or if you've got very tiny fingers an extra small sized keyboard for me I'll go back to medium so in terms of visiting a website we'll just quickly go bbc.com and in terms of actual buffering times I've found it to be relatively quick I mean I've got, as I say I've got an iPad and I haven't found it any slower than that I think the operating system or the webkit system that they're using for their browser is very very good now in terms of multitasking which is what I really want to get onto if we hold down that and we open in a new card 
it just flicks it on top. Now if we swipe from the bottom up, that's how we get back to our home screen, or we can press the home button. And you can do two things with these cards. You can either have them side by side, and you can flick through them, or if you put your finger down on one and hold it down, you can stack them. And I think that I, I personally think that is the best form of multitasking that I've seen used on these devices. Another rather cool thing about these devices is the fact that they have built in flash, which quite a few tablets out there don't currently have. And the ones that do, it is rather laggy. So, we'll quickly go to our channel and hopefully you will see it boot up one of our videos no lag and it'll play it perfectly fine so that's the Bloom Corp channel you can see there's a couple of videos on there a little bit of information on the left hand side some of our subscribers a comment that was left on the channel and without any problem it's firing up a video and it's playing it right from the off tap it to pause it expand to full screen the only one issue is that when you do do that it has to be done in a certain screen rotation and then to get out of full screen bottom right as you can see the auto rotation on the screens worked flick up and to get rid of a web page flick down and flick down the mail app is another one that I've been very impressed with we'll just open up the top one first because I don't really want my private account on display now what you can do is you can move it so if I move that across that will show me all my accounts but if I move it that way then it gives me a fuller screen as you can see here I can now see all my emails but then if I click on that one then it'll move that full screen across so what I'll just quickly do is we'll go back to that email there and you can see it works perfectly fine and it is very very good it's got a universal inbox as well so that you can see everything and just quickly move that back across and it'll flick across and again this is one of the better versions of an email client that I've seen on a tablet and possibly also on some PCs in many respects it is very very impressive flick up and flick away the calendar application is something that I have found can be a little bit laggy occasionally and uh, it doesn't want to work for me at the moment and I must admit that is something that is uh, it's, it's a little bit slow on in terms of responsiveness and uh, the less said about that the better I think really that's something that will hopefully be fixed in a firm firmware update I should say this is the instant messenger client which if you've got a pre 3 you can obviously um, receive your text messages and your phone calls on although I have found personally myself that you can use it with the older phones especially from the phone calls um, line but I haven't been able to use text messages I can sync it with my account and it'll bring them up and I can type them on screen but when I send it it keeps on telling me that it fails to send hopefully that's something that will be fixed in a firmware update although it could be that they just don't actually support the phone that I was using it with which would be a bit of a shame the pictures client it, because when you log in originally you can um, use all your accounts at the same time so it'll ask you for, the, for your details, your Facebook account, your Twitter account whatever you're subscribing to and it'll pull pictures from all those different types of sources which I think is really impressive so I've got my holiday to Washington DC in 2010 I've got mobile uploads I've got profile pictures generic wallpapers logos and for some reason it mixes videos in as well which is a little bit weird you would expect it to have its own designated file it doesn't in terms of playing videos it's sort of it is very much like Apple in that it gives you the big thick top and bottom black bar. I think if you you could probably go to f yeah have to reduce it down. There we go and you'll see. But in terms of sound quality and video quality, again it's very good because the screen resolution itself is very good. And we'll quickly flick off that. To get into the main applications bar, you can literally just um, press the home button to open it up or just quickly flick up doing it like that. In terms of applications you get with the device when you purchase it, these are the standard generic ones that come. Um, because I had a pre before and I already had the account that it came with, when I um, turned on the device, I will have. To, I must say I didn't have to have a computer or anything to get a first boot to sort of sync it up to anything this is a totally wireless device in that sense 
I typed in my username, it did something for a couple of minutes, and then all of these downloaded app from my past device were on there, which was quite impressive. Although, I say that, but there is one inherent flaw, and that is you get it in a much smaller screen format, which is disappointing because it's not really user-friendly in that respect. There we go. There are, however, a couple of apps on which are meant for this device, Angry Birds being one, and that was one of the first ones I did download, and it was free, which was... Well, I was very happy with anywhere. And in terms of responsiveness, I think it's it's up there with some of the other devices. Pinch to zoom works perfectly well. Flick and boom. As you can see, that works perfectly well. And you can have that running in the background, and it the device works perfectly fine, and you don't get any more lag. I haven't really used the favorites column and the settings columns, rather like the old one. Although, you do have print management settings, which is what I should say, because it's got wireless print technology built in, which works with all which works with all types of HP printers, and I do have one downstairs. Unfortunately, it's not turned on, so I can't show you that technology at the moment, I don't think. Select the network, and it's not currently bringing up any printers that it can find, and I think that is because it is turned off. So, we'll flick that one off the screen. And the one last thing I want to comment on before we bring this video to a close, and it's probably the most important aspect of this, and that is the HP App Catalog Store. And this is possibly the only thing holding this device back, and that is the lack of apps currently available. When you open it up, it brings up this um, featured app called Pivot, and I think the idea is that it tells you about all the fantastic apps that you can get. The only problem is, when you do bring it up, it actually says not available. We'll go to categories though, and you'll see in the top hand, the top of the device, if you just bear with me for one second, we have all apps. Now, the only problem is that when you look at the right hand side of the device, free, 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 but out of all of those, the only one that's actually currently built for the touchpad is that one there and for me that is very disappointing because it means that I've got a device that I've paid £499 for but there isn't currently a lot of content that I can put on it and I think that is the only thing that is holding this back I think for HP's first attempt at creating a tablet it's it's absolutely fantastic there just isn't a lot of content to put on it now for those of you that noticed on my videos section I do have a film currently on there and what I did was I just literally plugged it into my Mac and I plugged it in by the um, cable provided into the base. What you do have to be careful of is how you name your files. The first, My first couple of attempts of getting media onto this were very difficult. I just dragged across a film and some pictures. Did absolutely nothing. It couldn't find them anywhere. What I had to do was put them in a folder and call the folder videos and call the folder pictures. And when I did that, then all of a sudden I get quite a bit of the content that's down on this side. And I also get the video section, which has the No Strings Attached film that you can see. And it was only through doing that a couple of times that I actually learned how to do that. But it is a bit of a faff on, if I'm honest. So, in terms of my final thoughts on this tablet, I think it's absolutely fantastic. I think the multi-card system is brilliant. I think the way that it displays information is brilliant. There's just type, and you can type whatever you want in BBC and you can search it via, through your contacts, you can search it on Maps, Wikipedia, Twitter, catalogs, I think all of that is brilliant. I think the way that they've gone about it is fantastic, but there's nothing to put on it. And that really is going to be the deal break for a lot of people. I think the price point, for me, isn't really a sticking point. What is, is the fact that I can't put anything on it. I'm, I mean, I've been impressed with this device sufficiently that I am going to hold on to it, I'm going to use my iPad for my for my personal tablet, and I'm going to use this as our Bloomcorp tablet for managing information. I've been impressed with it to that extent. But can I fully recommend that people go out and buy this over anything else on the market? If you're not interested in apps, then yes. But if you want to do something on your tablet, then unfortunately at this point in time, I can't recommend that you go out and get it, because at this moment in time there isn't a great deal to put on it. And if I was to get it, if I was to give it a star rating, I'd probably give it 3 out of 5 with the tagline, further development required. Anyway, I'm Craig from Bloomcorp. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to comment, rate and subscribe.